My name is Bradford, and I'm going to teach you the rules of water polo. I played one season of club high school water polo, so little asterisk. These are the rules for high school. Never played in the Olympics, never played professional. This is what I know. <laughs> Start off with a pool, obviously. That's ideally rectangular in shape. It's really hard. You can't just go out, mark off some grass, and you can in most sports, so you do what you can. There is a midline, and then a five meter line on each side, and a goal, which is ideally up out of the water, excuse me, behind the, up on the edge of the pool, but it's usually in the water because they don't have built-in goals at places. And you start with seven people. Goalie, and three guys on each side of the goalie. Ref blows the whistle, puts the ball right here. These two guys, <clears throat> they're called your wings. They're usually your fastest. You guys who actually swam before. <laughs> <laughs> when I played, I was on flat, which is these two guys right here. And then this, this is the point man, and this is what's called O-hole, which will make more sense when I explain to you what the setup offense is. But going back, it's played in a pool. You can't touch the bottom of the pool. You can't push off the sides of the pool. It's played with a ball that's similar to a volleyball, but it's a lot grippier, so you can grip it with one hand, because you can't touch the ball with two hands at any point during the game unless you're the goalie catching it. If the ball goes out for any reason, the ref gives it to the opponent that didn't touch it last, similar to most sports. Also, the most important and most complicated part of water polo is the fouling rule. If somebody has the ball, you cannot impede their progress. You can only touch the ball. At least the ref can't see you. That's the best part about water polo and the worst sometimes. People throwing bows underwater, you can't see it. Also, if you're on defense, you can just hang on somebody. You can do whatever you want to somebody if they don't have the ball. <laughs> First time I played water polo, I thought I was going to drown. You're swimming for yourself, and then you got a big defender on top of you, you're like, I told myself, I picked the wrong sport, I'm going to die in this pool of this. You get over it, and you play, and I ended up having a blast doing it. But what's called setup offense is wings, move down, this is the team offense. One thing I forgot to tell you also, if you get fouled outside the five meter line, you can take a shot on goal as long as it's one continuous motion. You can't try and juke out the goalie. And if you get fouled, you have a five meter, you have a five meter radius around you where you can't be touched until you either move or throw the ball to somebody else. So one of the main strategies in water polo is called drawing the foul, which is where, say, someone's trailing you and you're swimming, you just act like you went underwater. And the ref understands it's called drawing the foul, but it's part of the game. Anyway, setting up offense. And then the flats come and move like this. Here. Here. Man, I excuse me. They go all the way down. Whichever guy on the side is playing point goes to here, and then whichever guy is playing O hole goes to right here. And you don't try and go right to the goal, you usually try and pass it around the perimeter of your defense to confuse them, and just wait till you have an opportunity. Get it to the guy on O hole. He is usually your best player, or at least your most accurate player, and he gets it into the goal. That, ladies and gentlemen, it's the basics. <laughs>